Ron here. Today I'd like to show the difference in efficiency uh, between a homemade inductor core and a purchased inductor core. Uh, my personal bent has been uh, electromagnetic flyback voltage to perform lighting tasks. And so again I'm talking about this circuit here. I'm going to use my 555 timer again today. And uh, basically it's just a 555 timer sending a square wave to a large transistor. The transistor is allowing uh, DC current to flow into an inductor and then cut the current off very quickly. This produces electromagnetic flyback voltage that is, converts DC current into uh, a mock AC voltage. So I can light bulbs that were meant to be used with household AC current and I can light them with a battery pack. Uh, that's been my goal because uh, I'm interested in lamps and flashlights and I want to be able to use the same bulbs that I have all over my house uh, particularly the one on the right which is the 8.5 watt light bulb I have that throughout my home and you see me light that with the circuit uh, other times for other reasons today I want to focus on the homemade inductor I have here uh, I should say the homemade core uh, the inductor core is made from what's known as a lag bolt. That guy right there is quite long. Uh, it might be known as a carriage bolt or a machine bolt. But it's a long tube of metal and it's threaded on one end. It usually has a round or hex head. And what I did was cut off uh, a bolt. I cut it in half. One half is the core of the inductor on my Bedini motor. The other half I have right here in front of you. Uh, that inductor is 98 feet long. Uh, it is made of 28 gauge magnet wire. And I have a store bought inductor core, a very nice one. Also, the same wire, 28 gauge, also exactly 98 feet. So I've measured these uh, in feet and wrapped them and I measured them with uh, resistance to check that they are both uh, the same amount of wire. Uh, so let's go to the homemade guy first. Let's light it up and uh, see what happens. Let me back this scene up. I'm going to fire up the bulb. And I'm putting, a, I have a 10 volt battery pack, and I am going to adjust it so that I'm putting only a 1 watt of energy into that little 2 watt light bulb I have. Okay, I'm, oop, hard to get it just right. Okay, we're reading 100 milliamps on a 10 volt battery pack. That's 1 watt going into this little AC bulb. It's lit a little bit. I'm not meaning to light it very much. I just want to see the result. I have a uh, light meter, a measured distance away from this light bulb. And I'm measuring uh, the amount of light going into the meter. And I have already set the uh, yellow marker to be on the white line. The white line moves. That's the amount of light that's hitting the lens of this light meter and the yellow marker looks to be just about dead on. I'm going to leave it right there. That's good. So that's how much light I can get with one watt on that inductor. I'm going to stop for a moment and we're going to switch to a store-bought inductor core. Okay, I have the new inductor in place. Again, it's a single wrap of wire, 98 feet long, 28 gauge magnet wire. Uh, the core of that toroid is a T, 
as in toroid 200-26 from Micrometals. It is a yellow-white toroid. It's white on the other side. And it's made of Metals Mix 26. Uh, it is made to have a smooth frequency response, that is, have the same magnetic permeability up to 10 megahertz. Uh, so that coil will operate smoothly at any frequency. So let me go back to the battery here. Well, first of all, let me just uh, plug this boy in at the same setting. We had the homemade inductor core, the machine bolt that I had cut down. Let me light this guy up. First thing we notice is that we're using a lot less energy looks like 55 milliamps instead of a hundred so we're closer to a half watt of energy coming from my batteries right now the bulb was lit again and let's look at the light meter now the light meter shows I am getting more light with almost half the energy by using a professionally made uh, toroid from Micrometals. The T226 is operating much more efficiently than cutting down a lag bolt and winding the same amount of wire around it. So uh, let me gas this boy up a little bit. Let me take it up to the same level it was at. Let me put one watt of energy into this coil the same as we did before. Now, let's see how close I am here. Need a little more. Here we go. Okay, watt per watt. One watt on the toroid. Substantial increase in light coming off the bulb with the same amount of energy, the same circuitry, the same amount of wire. The only thing that changed was the core on the inductor and the shape of the inductor. So the uh, Micrometals toroid core is doing far, far better than the homemade cut down machine bolt that I have wrapped with the same amount of wire. So I guess that's the only point I need to make today. I have more in my mind, but I should make my videos a little shorter. So watt per watt, using a good core gets better results. Run out.